Hi everybody, in the previous video, we looked at what React is and all the cool things it has going on for it that makes it a great choice for building web apps in these days. Now, what we saw was an overview. We covered a lot of ground at a theoretical level, but in this video, we're gonna change that by going one level deeper. We're gonna start writing some code to bring some of that cool React stuff to life. We're gonna learn how to build our first React app. And so, if we look at our browser, which is the primary way we're gonna be interacting with our React content, think of your browser as not the complex piece of machinery that it is, but more to the render of content. All a browser really understands is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Through that, it can do a lot of things like play videos, display images, play sounds, and all the things we take for granted, but at the end of the day, it just deals with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so your web app can be very complex, but no matter how complex it is, it's still built up of those three components. We saw earlier though, that with React, you get to define your content and some of your interactivity, not using HTML, but using a special markup language known as JSX. Now, JSX looks a lot like HTML, but it kind of combines HTML and JavaScript into, uh, into a different form, something that is very unique to the React development itself. And so the question is this, how do we go from JSX that we write as part of building a React app to the regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that our browser understands. So there are two ways you can do this. One way is we set up a development environment that is built around Node, Babel, Webpack, a lot of cool things that you might be hearing about and use that as our way of going from JSX to something that our browser understands. That is definitely the more complicated approach, definitely the, the proper approach in the long run. Approach number two, we take the easy route. We let our browser automatically convert JSX to JavaScript at runtime. And so what we're gonna do is this. As part of learning React, getting your development environment set up, dealing with all the craziness that goes with it is probably a little too much. So for what we're gonna do right now, as part of just getting up to speed with React and learning the basics of it, we're gonna let a browser handle all this. We're not going to do the whole complicated development environment route just yet, but we will later on. So don't feel like you're gonna be missing out on how all of your friends and all the things you see online are using React and how they're building from it. So with all that said, it's time to get started building our app. Okay, so the first thing you need is a code editor and you need to be able to preview it in your browser, use whatever arrangement you want. And so what I have is VS Code. That's my favorite editor of choice right now, but you can use Atom, you can use Sublime, you can use Code, you can use TextMate, whatever code editor happens to be your favorite, feel free to use it. We don't really care about your code editor as much as the code you end up writing in it. And as you'll see with React, it's very unopinionated in code editors as well. So I'm using VS Code, and I currently have my window split into a 50-50 arrangement where my code editor takes up half the screen. The other half is just the browser where I have the exact same page that I'm working on currently displayed. And of course, if you look at the HTML that we have, we're starting off with a very blank slate. We have very little going on right here. And my cat has decided to make a cameo during the video. Say hi to everyone, Pixel. Pixel says hi, and he wishes everyone the best. So let's continue from there. Our HTML page is completely empty. There's very little going on. And all we need to do is start from here and gradually add the functionality that'll make our React app start functioning. So if you don't have an HTML page created, take a moment to pause the video and copy the things you see here as it is. The important thing to note is that make sure to have the meta car set set to UTF-8. It's needed for how we're gonna be turning our JSX and turning it into HTML, CSS, JavaScript that our browser can understand. So once you've done that, the first thing we're gonna do is reference the libraries needed to get a React app working. So that's gonna involve the React libraries, there are two of them, and then the one more library for turning JSX into regular HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the Babel transpiler. And so I'm going to provide a link to the current version of these files in the description and note that what the version I'm gonna see here may update in the near future. So feel free to use the hard-coded version right now that you see in the video as part of just following along, but definitely double check to see if there's a more recent version that tends to have performance fixes, security fixes, and things like that. So that's the day, and that's the problem with videos really is that once it's been recorded, it pretty much stays that way until it's re-recorded again. So I'm just gonna insert the couple of script tags that we need to make this work. And so, Right now, I have three script tags. Let me format it properly to display here. And what you see are two script tags 
One is for the React DOM, which gives us the ability to work with React at the DOM level, which is what our HTML web page is designed around. The other one is around the React Development API, which is the core React library. This contains all the functionality that React really brings that does all the things that we talked about in the previous video that makes it really cool. And the last thing is a reference to Babel. And Babel, to those of you who don't know, is a very popular transpiler that takes your JavaScript or any other kind of script and turns it into a version of JavaScript your browser understands. And there's a lot of vari var variations of JavaScript out there, and JSX happens to be one of them that it supports. And what we're doing here by referencing it is ensuring that we can write JSX in our browser and still have a page that works where the JSX is converted into something our browser understands. And the cross-origin script, optional. I, you know, this Facebook documentation specifies you add it. I've added it as well, but I'm just removing it right now so you can see the URL that I'm currently using more clearly. All right, so that was the, that's the hard part really, is copy and pasting the script tags that you need. The rest is gonna be very, very easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is this. Let me just check my notes to make sure I'm not missing anything here. And, nope. So what we need to do is add a function that is responsible in the React world for getting content printed onto the screen. And that function is known as render. And so I'm gonna type in React DOM and the method is called React DOM.render. That's it. If I have React DOM.render, I've written my very first React call that calls into the API that is available for us to use. When what render does, it takes two arguments. One method is the thing we want to print, the JSX, one argument, sorry, and the second argument is the element we want to print our content to. So I'm going to first specify, I'm going to add some spacing. You'll find that in React, the spacing and arrangement of things is a little different than we might expect it to be because we're specifying a large amount of content as an argument, things that traditionally would be in some other, other form. So I'm just going to put here heading H1 and feel free to just use whatever name you want. I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to put Sherlock Holmes here, close to the heading one. That's our first argument to render a method, comma, this is our second argument, which is location we want to print our content to. I'm going to keep it easy, just document.body. All right, so right now we've basically told React to use the render API to print the text Sherlock Holmes in a heading one tag to our body element. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and this again has to do with just how we're printing content to the screen. I'm gonna change the type of our script tag to be text slash Babel. And this is what tells our Babel transpiler to take this content and run it through its magic workflow to generate HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So I'm gonna hit refresh on the page, and if everything works fine, you'll see the words Sherlock Holmes displayed. So congratulations, you've now built your very first React app. We're not done with the video yet though, you know, it's too early to celebrate just yet. We're gonna make some minor tweaks while we are at it. And so and these are just to help you become more familiar with writing React and just getting used to just its little quirks as, as you might see in a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change, the, change where we're actually printing all of our content to. And so, for example, right now, we're printing everything to document that body. In general, though, you probably don't want to do that. You want to print it to a location that is more consistent with how your rest of your app's content might be displayed. So in the HTML, I'm going to specify div. Let me give the ID value of container, and let's close the div. And let's go and print our Sherlock Holmes content into our div whose ID value is container. That means instead of using document that body, I can do document.query selector and hashtag container, and the end result will be the same. Instead of, well, same in that it'll look the same because we don't have anything visually crazy going on, but we will have our content now being printed to the container element as opposed to before. And I know some of you are sticklers for not having query sector calls be directly in an argument for a function. So we'll just say var destination equals, we'll copy this entire line in, and instead of specifying document query selector that container directly, we will just specify destination instead. You know, whatever floats your boat, feel free to use, use that. And so now that we have this kind of done, the way Sherlock Holmes is appearing, it's kind of bland, it's really boring, right? 
let's go and style it up. We will look at other ways of styling our content in a little bit, but for now, let's do it the easy way. Let's use style tags. That's the, you know, the thing is, at the end of the day, everything you're seeing is just normal web stuff that we've been dealing with for many decades, at least 20 years. So the style tag works. You can CSS up your content just like you would anything else. So we have the container element. So let's go ahead and give it some values. I'm looking at my notes to make sure that I'm being consistent with what I've written about as well, because as you may know, a lot of the videos also have a tutorial that's been a written version tutorial. It's also there. I try to keep the content consistent so that way if you're jumping between the video and with what I've written, you're not completely lost. So we have our container, our padding properties 50x, our background color is going to be a very light gray. And if I just were to refresh the page, you can see that starting to starting to appear. And let's go ahead and style up the text as well. Container h1, and let's give it a, a really, really large font size, 144 pixels. Font family, we'll give it sans serif, you know, nice, simple, modern look to it. And we make the color, this is going to be 008088. All right. So now if we refresh the page one more time, you can now see the words Sherlock Holmes appearing in a ridiculously large font. But notice that what we've just done for the past few minutes is nothing React specific. It's just normal JavaScript DOM APIs and then some CSS to make our app look a little bit better. And so that's actually you know, not a not a bad spot to end this video on because really what I want to focus on with React is this. Let's go to our conclusion, is that React has a lot of things going for it, but at the end of the day, all it really does, it just helps you generate markup and CSS and JavaScript, HTML CSS JavaScript, in a more efficient way. And so a lot of things that you've learned in the past, you'll still need to know really well. You can't really get away from learning React first and learning about JavaScript and styling and layout and accessibility, all these things that are part of building a web app, you can't really learn that later. The goal really, the way you learn React is really, you need to have a very solid grasp of the basics, which is something that you need to, you know, spend some time and oftentimes, you know, just, just work through some examples and truly understand what's going on. And then you'll be better prepared for what React provides because React is really just a shortcut in many ways. The library does a lot of things for you behind the scenes, but as a developer, all you're really doing is just doing different things with the same markup you've been writing for a long time, same JavaScript you've been writing for a very long time, just putting them into different sized containers, you know, one way of looking at it. All right, if you have any questions, please post in the forums at forum.crypt.com and tell your friends and enemies all about these videos. That's the, you know, best way to make sure that everyone learns React. And I think React is cool enough that everyone should know it, even people you don't really enjoy hanging out with they should learn React also. Hit subscribe to be notified of other videos that are coming along that happen to do with web development. Follow me on Twitter at Krupa, where I write about React, web development stuff, cat videos, just a lot of interesting things that I find interesting and I hopefully find that you all think is cool as well. And there's also a book, Learning React, that goes into great detail on all the things about how to get started from React all the way to the more advanced topics like Redux and so on. So check it out if you're into that. All right, guys. I'll see you all next time.